everybody, it's me, Chelsea Bites, and we are back for episode four of The Download. Biden dropped out of the race. All right, so I, there's, a, there's a rhyme or reason, not really, to this episode or The Download in general. We just kind of, when we feel like we need to say stuff, we get on here and we say stuff. Yeah, it is July 21st, and mm. literally 15 minutes ago, Biden dropped out of the presidential campaign. And I am just, I, I feel like, I feel like <laughs> I just be, all my ops are getting taken down this year, but like in the worst way. Because I said, didn't I say, Mango? I said, the best thing Biden could do, which I think the best thing, or like I could see them doing, because my man clearly can't keep it together. Mm. He wins the election and drops, resigns immediately. Yeah, it was the best thing he could have done. And they could have yeah. had they could have had a VP ready to go. But I just don't understand why the Democrats keep shooting themselves in the foot. How I mean, is Kamala going to beat Trump? He largely, I mean, look, he was getting attacked from all sides. Obviously, Trump was attacking yeah. him. Right. Uh, you know, there were people who didn't like his policies on Israel. They were attacking him. Um, but even from the democratic party right they were there were yeah. calls for him to resign right yeah uh, and, i get that but he, and i'm like i feel like as the democratic party you should be looking like okay like you need to think ahead because <laughs> you call for him to resign okay now what are y'all gonna are y'all doing it because you're saying hey if you resign biden we're gonna put our full power behind kamala because i don't think that's what they were saying so <laughs> yeah i i uh I, yeah <laughs> what are some of the Read us some of the reactions. I mean, it was funny because uh, I saw even like like Hassan posted like two hours ago, right? And he said, I'm shooting a trailer today for a Twitch show, so I most likely won't be live. Biden, you better not drop out yet. <laughs> and then two hours later, that man drops out, right? People are, people are joking like, you know, they're going to drink bleach. You know, people are saying... Uh, I'm full behind Kamala, but I, I really need the Democratic Party to get behind her too. You know, um, you know, I, I I really wish like you know they stop playing around, beat this convicted felon, get fully behind Biden, get him in, and then and then resign, right? I mean, I, yeah, that was ridiculous. I they. Mm, I'd be feeling like they if they're going to sell this whole bipartisan thing and they're not all just like rich people versus the poor, like the Democrats and the Republicans aren't just in on it all together. They need to actually put up a fight. Yeah, like period. I'm, I'm really I mean, already we saw the the hatred and vitriol with Obama. Right. And that he, man wore a tan suit and they and lost he, their mind. He's, he's not even he's not even fully black <laughs> Obama's half black he's and mixed. they gave him they gave him all sorts of mess even and even during the election right and now not only is Kamala black but she's also a woman we've seen how they do with with women unfortunately in our country right unfortunately our country is not kind to women um, Kamala I will be voting for you but you better know what you're doing it's not to me it's not even up to her honestly but, to me, it, but she's I, a part I, of it. I, it is, yeah. No, it's know not what up you're to her. Doing, I think we all know that it's not up to her. But to me, the Democratic they Party they put her needs face on get, it. So you better yeah, they, hope. I actually, honestly, while Biden endorsed her, I could see the Democratic Party get putting more, uh, you know, more gusto behind somebody else before they actually select who's going to be uh, leading the party. Uh, which I could see them. That's true. I could see Gavin Newsom throwing his hat in. No, I'm so glad. That's, I was, shh, you beat me to it. If Gavin Newsom stepped up and was like, I'm the new president, I'm the new Democratic, like, elect, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. they'd eat him up. They'd love it. They would love everything. But I mean, he's I'm white. not, I'm not upset with that though, because remember when we stayed in Cali for four years? Yeah. I didn't have much to go off of with Newsom. I think we watched we watched that one video after we left where he defended himself against that one that one reporter. There was a I'm, if I can find it, I will put it here. Mm -hmm. But 
I was very impressed with his poli- his political moves, how he handles himself in debate. But what I loved, and I'm not trying to sit here and be like down with Kamala. I'm just hyping up, you know, when I when I see my tens, I see my tens. We were in California for the pandemic and Newsom putting his foot down and being so strict on everyone when it came to restaurants, businesses, people, and not spreading the virus that Trump let in. I Oof. Yeah. That oof, that our government so irrationally and just so irresponsibly let into our country. Newsom's response and his daily updates. I know a lot of states were doing this, but him like keeping everyone up to date, making sure he showed up every day to give them like, you know, day to day updates on what was happening with the pandemic, who was dying. Like it, he was like reporting on the numbers, everything, because what I think we missed in the pandemic to this day is we never really made like a national moment of silence. I'm sure people were doing it state by state. Like they were people in their cities were honoring the dead, but I don't think it ever became real to people how bad the pandemic was because Trump never acknowledged that so many people around our country were dying. So many people around the world were dying. And I appreciated Newsom in just in the short amount of time we were under his government, like what do do we call that, his governorship? (laughs) His governorship, yeah. His government, in, in Newsom's government, he was just a stand-up politician as far as you can throw a politician. Right. How do you feel? How do, oh. I mean, I think he, I think he was good. I, I think he generally, and he, and he stood by his, his what beliefs, either the ones that we align with or not, regardless, he stood by his beliefs. And I, I really, I, I worry for a black woman <sighs> trying to get elected in this country just because it's it's the just because she's hatred. she's not the, she has so many layers to she's not like even oh she's like, she's intelligent she's a great speaker she knows but even her cultural about. background is so layered as well i think people are so quick to uh we do the one drop rule real fast like i don't want to say just black but she's True. also she's also i believe she has a south asian background as well let me make sure I'm correct. But she's also she also has other cultural identities, and I think that's not going to serve yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mom, saw what yeah. they did with Trump's VP when they found uh, out he was married to uh, an Indian woman. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, people were already coming out saying they had issues with it, saying he was a liar, right? So it, my. My deep, it sincere word. Her mom's Indian, Chelsea, if that's what you're asking. You're talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamala, yeah, Kamala. is, yeah. she is a person of color, a woman at that, about yeah, to run mom, for president. Yeah, her mom's Indian, her dad's Jamaican, so. and There I, it is, yeah, thank you. Yeah, as a person of color, as a woman in America, like, I, I mean, I, I I genuinely think black <gasps> black women have it hardest in this country, so. I, I really I worry for I, the 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 Democratic Party alone just fully putting their support behind her. You know, can I tell you when I looked up Trump's VP, the first thing it said was Usha Usha Vance or Usha Vance. I think that's her name. I hope mm-hmm. I'm not pronouncing it right. I know wife of Donald Trump's VP pick was once a Democrat. That's what it said a day ago. Like, yeah. They're picking, they are picking Trump's VP apart just for being, if she was white, they would not be picking into her this hard. They would not. So yeah. not at all. Yeah, this, J.D. Vance is a disturbing choice for vice president. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he's pretty caustic as well in general. Yeah, I actually do believe that. I'm not mad at that article. So yeah, we had to start off. The top but, of our but download. at least like my, even if it's not him like oh i wish he could have get just get elected and, and you know some people might think like oh well biden probably was gonna lose then drop out last year why why are you dropping out when there's three why? months he left wasted for the ele- so 
so she has three months to try to campaign and win. Like, are you kidding me? Like, why did you wait? It's disgusting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't know what what are they? Th- Remember when my my dad brought up how? Um, oh man, was it? I, I always forget Ruth. It was was it R B G? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Yeah. R B G. When um, unfortunately she passed. I mean, we all everybody just poured out their love to her but my hey my dad thought she should have resigned because well, yeah, timing lot, is everything yeah, timing is everything say that. and yeah, like, and we need all of those sentences we need as many seats as possible when it comes to it, it just they're not communicating they are not and and i just can't imagine not we watch we watch game of thrones we watch yeah. House of the like we watch all of these political shows, movies. How is our government, or what are we not seeing in our government? Where these obvious outliers, like, oh yeah, we're gonna need that seat in a few years. Maybe it's time to push on her to, you know, maybe it's time to resign, Ruth. Or and then we wouldn't end up with Trump feeling like damn near three seats. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it, it, like all of no, these little it, it, misses. All of these yeah. little misses that we're having where Biden wastes our time for six months and now we have Kamala having to pick up the pieces or we're rushing to find a new candidate. Yeah. Yeah. This man, Trump has just dropped the hardest album cover of our decade and we out here rushing to find a contender. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm annoyed about the whole situation. So. <sighs> It's so stupid because I told you, I said, hey, hey, the best thing that could happen to us right now is if he wins and he resigns because he was tired. You saw him. My man was tired. Yeah. He yeah, was man tired. Was tired. He, People he were him. thinking that he couldn't win. Um, but, you know, I say? honestly, I put I put more. Unfortunately, I trust America to be more sexist and racist than I trust, you know, Trump to beat Biden. Unfortunately. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got comments. Ain't going to lie. I think this will improve his party's chance at winning. I think if Biden stuck it out till the elections, he sure for sure he would have lost. That's what somebody said. I, I feel like that's people undercounting how toxic this country is honestly <sighs> yeah like like i think, like, I think I, you people know what it was take, you know what it was decrepit old white man before yeah. they took somebody they like t- me took a took a black woman yeah yeah for sure that's just and, a fact y'all like it's child and you, you know what somebody said it like the one thing that unites both the left and the right is their hatred of black people <laughs> when I found out some of the most profitable cities in America are based off of the exploitation of black people, like direct, like New York. Grand well, the city, the cities with people with the most uh, old money, basically. Yeah. With yeah. Old mo- New York. What, what else? Um, what was it? St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis had a large amount of indentured servants and uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they literally made the most money off of black people yeah. in their time. Insur- half of these insurance companies, y'all, if you don't understand what the heck or where the heck, people think that this stuff just disappears. No, they adapted. Like, it was wild finding out of Aflac was literally just a giant plantation, like, company. Like, they were the biggest cotton mill in America. Yeah. And they just translated that to insurance because what where do insurance companies come from? Just large amounts of capital. And it's basically just giant loans. Just just like, yeah. oh, you pay me first though. You're you're just you're you're front paying a loan. Insurance is yeah. crazy. I honestly think Kamala could have won if she was running. If she started. Full- if he right, hadn't if wasted started, our time. If she had run a full campaign for election. Yeah. Um, she I mean, had. Don't get me wrong. We're still voting for her, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I said that at the top. We're voting yeah. for Kamala. Don't even get this twisted. I, I'm just not silly. I don't, I'm not going to be a silly person that doesn't see the odds ahead of us. 
Right, right. Because people, I saw people were saying like, well, a black man got elected and a white woman he, won the popular vote right over Trump. But I'm like, but you see what it took. It, it's 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 not right. You see what it took, and it's not additive, right? It's multiplicative. Like being both black and a woman multiplies the amount of hate that you face. It's not just the same as the amount of hate for just a black man or a white woman. No, it's All not. Right? It is not. <laughs> there are levels and layers to this. Being a woman is not the same as being a black man. Being a mm. white woman is not the same as being a black woman. Y'all know this. Y'all know this. And yeah. you are treated differently in society. The difference is, I would say if you're comparing Obama and Clinton, Hillary Clinton, specifically um obama yeah. had worked his whole damn life up to that point like his whole life and, and he had been he had been running for election for a while he they both, yeah. the, both obama both obama and hillary had a full standard term to run for election period uh, unfor unfortunately yeah C Kamala. hillary was born I, I thought hillary was born into the political scene though like she had politicians in her family or am I tripping? Cause I know she you married a president. Well, well, yeah, yeah. She like did. she was married to a president already. So you already have those connections. So like, think about she's, that. She's though. been in it. She's been in it. Yeah. She yeah she's Yale, been in it. Law school, you know, she was. Same. Uh, hey, just as qualified. I, I'm not trying to pit each other. I'm not trying to pit Obama versus Clinton I'm saying their backgrounds are different so hey, but come on hey Kamala too to me it's not even a background thing it's just come down to they were able to run for election on a full standard term of when you would normally run for election see, but Kamala you see has how... three months up until today Kamala has been full Joe Biden's gonna be the, the president again yeah, yeah, Joe yeah. Biden is I fully endorse Joe Biden now she now has to swapping. full shift yeah and, and to, she has I'm to shift and say president. I'm the I'm gonna be president and, and people are gonna say saying, well why weren't you pushing for yourself and I'm not saying like their backgrounds like in their studies or their qualifications are different I'm saying like their resources like who they were pulling on like I would say Hillary had a little more of a buff than Obama Sure. But she was going up against Trump. Yeah. And unfortunately, the time is all about timing. Like, I feel like if it was Obama versus Trump, we might have had a little bit of a, it might have been a tighter race. Might have been a different story. Mm, that's a good question. I feel like Hillary had more of a track record as setting herself up as a viable candidate, even when she was uh you know first lady so so she's had that experience and even she couldn't fight the bs that america sets out yeah like that's what i'm talking about obama is and you see like that one step obama is a man so there's there's that shift obama mm. as a man i think that's where that's that one thing that that one level of privilege that obama had he was a man and he had been working towards this as well as hillary his whole life mm -hmm. but because he was a man i think people can swallow that and yeah also helps yeah. when mitt romney calls the american people stupid well they, he, yeah he kind of messed himself he, over with that see 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 it, it's all about timing it's all about but timing. It's, it's, it's timing but it's like i feel like trump has done similar things but we're because different we, people now yeah, be, no, yeah it's not even different people it's we because, are different people voting now literally no but i'm saying because trump's platform has been built off of that shock value he can say wild he stuff yeah. and not get set up you know by saying that people while, make excuses you know, for him yeah exactly exactly yeah. people like mitt romney obama yeah. or obama even like if obama had said something just something off like that like all, half of the american people are dumb or something obama oh he'd been be out cooked. that would have been it he'd have been yeah. done yeah yeah so, so he yeah. start trump started as himself yes. an angry privileged white man <laughs> yeah and 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 now it's emboldened people to come out and also be their angry emboldened white selves mm -hmm. period all right, y'all. Yeah, you could tell it took us a while to chew that over, but that was just the start of our day. I'm really, ugh, I'm done. 
let's talk about us. So just to give you an update on what we've been up to for the past few months, we've been traveling, we've been doing some interviews, and we started a new channel with our friends called State of Slay. I've loved it. It's really nice after about like five, six years of streaming, having friends that I can like consistently you know make content with because that's the one thing mango y'all don't understand mango would get on me about this you don't really you know hang out and i'm like okay dang but i i do sometimes i'm like what do i have to be up somebody's butt every five seconds uh, chelsea chelsea convinces herself that she is busy 24 7 which hey i which, don't hey, which hey which hey she is she is busy <sighs> But I don't convince she also, myself. She, she does, but she also does not like bothering people. She really, she genuinely, and I, know, and I know people will say like, "Oh, that's not that's just an excuse." Like, no, as her husband, I'm letting y'all know that she genuinely feels bad reaching out to people. She feels like she's bothering people. She feels like people have better things to do than really, you know, just hang out and do stuff and collab with her. So she doesn't do it too much. So oftentimes I'm having to go do it and reach out and then but try I've, to make it I've happen. done it like I've done one offs. Like yeah. I, I, I've gone and I've played some games with some friends. I've joined their streams. I thought, you know, me doing all these tabletop shows counted too, you know, as collabs. It, is. It, do, it does count. It does count. But again, think about it. Mango. Ta what what tabletop shows are you talking about? I was like all the things that we did with Pixel Circus, how we you did didn't with the Dat Network. That. You but didn't those reach were out but that. that but it's not about reaching out; it's doing it. No, but that's what we're talking about. Obviously, if people oh, reach out to Chelsea, she I does was, it. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that's what I was that, saying. No, no, people reach out to you. You'll do it. I'm saying that Chelsea does not reach out. So to people. what does it matter? What does it matter? What what matters is is I'm I'm collaborating collab with people. Yeah, but only as long as they're reaching out. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, fine. So the difference with State of Slay is now I am proactively going out of my way to ask my friends to make content with our group, which is nice. It's very nice. Yeah. We laugh every yeah. week now. I think if you have a chance to do something with your friends, whether it's one other friend, three other friends, whatever, do it once a week. I think that's the one thing I'm trying to keep them is consistent and frequent because that's the difficult part. I got to we got to be besties. You know, you got to Now I want to see how far uh, we can take status Slay, but it's nice. It's very nice going on status Slay socials and just seeing like all the fun, like all the nice things that we do. It's truly like black girl joy. Yeah. I love yeah, no, it, it is genuinely watching it it really feels like man these people might actually like each other that's crazy <laughs> thanks thanks <sighs> moving on so uh, a lot's happened since we've last done our download and oof we had some people on our t we had cheaters we had abusers coming up on our tl just people that we knew in the space not cute and yo rest bless their souls rest in peace because they got yo their channel yeah, a lot, a lot have of they people, have they tweeted since has that uh no no has that boy t has he tweeted oh i'm gonna look no, n none of them none of them have none of them no no one of them did no one of them still is yeah Ooh. they commented on that one post oh one of them is still tweeting but yeah that the first, one the most recent one is still tweeted yeah 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 exactly if if yeah. if you catch my drift but the other two absolutely not since february yeah and they had a four, i would have never stopped Forty thousand likes couldn't be me my imagine my last post hits forty thousand likes yeah i mean hey and then, don't be don't be a jerk and, don't be uh, an asshole y'all that's the yeah. so yeah we see y'all we see y'all being assholes on the TL, we saw we saw Yasuke we saw Ubisoft we saw the Assassin's Creed Discord, discourse, <laughs> please stay in school, uh discourse. We saw IGN versus Kai Sinat for a hot second. Yeah, we saw P Diddy and Cassie. Yeah, we saw Kendrick versus. We were in the plane when the pop out was 
was was co- remember we were flying into LA we were in the air and going to LA when the pop out happened and Kendrick basically brought gang chella on stage well, he, just, he, he put a period on it basically he did he, said, he ended and it by, by the way I won period. by the way I won it was beautiful we were watching it on airplane Wi-Fi just mm. and I realized how many Kendrick songs I knew in that moment I was impressed with myself. I didn't. It's like one of the he's one of those artists that sneaks up on you. And I was watching a vlog yesterday. Shout out to Sunday Love. I was watching a vlog. I was trying to catch up on all her content. Six years ago, she said, quote unquote, Kendrick brings black people together. And I was like, that's a word. I need to tweet that (laughs) because she's right. She predicted all of this years ago. (laughs) Wow. But um, in my because I'm about to move on to the last few months, Mango, you wrote here, Mr. Beast, the most subscribed YouTuber in the world. Yeah, T series can up, uh, suck it. Yeah. Yeah, he passed up T series. Yeah, that's a beef as old as time. I remember when PewDiePie was trying to take well, when over. When T series, I think it passed up PewDiePie, and then Mr. Yeah. Beast was like, "I'm gonna get him." I'm back doing for it. You. Yeah, I'm doing it for yeah. PewDiePie. And he PewDiePie did like a whole, like he did a whole diss. Remember when it was popular for like the YouTubers to drop diss tracks? I remember. I remember. Yeah. And then uh, the Ikea virtual Roblox store. You get a job at Ikea virtually. $14 yeah. an hour. And, hey, 14, not, no, no, no. 1480 euros an hour. Oh, that's more. That's more. That is more. That's more. That's like 16, 17 bucks. But how and you can work in a virtual. What do you mean? The people go in and it's buy it's stuff laid at the out. Ikea store? It's laid out like a basically Ikea superstore. So it's got every product built in Roblox. So people can go in, buy stuff and you actually get a link and you could buy stuff in real life. Putting your oh, in your OK. Money. Then that's exactly what I'd find useful. Yeah. I'd like that. I get it completely now because that was because when I was sitting there trying to run through my mind, like, why? Why would I want to do this? I I get lost here. Why would I want to get lost? Mm -hmm. No, it's cool that you can buy it in -hmm. person, but Mm -hmm. like you can buy real stuff. I like that. I like that a lot. That's cool. That's cool. Exactly. I wonder how much they've made. I wonder how much that story's made. I don't know. They should they should update the number sometime. And then we got the Summer Game Fest, which. You said it, here highest it, it viewership is, ever. Yeah, I mean, well, they had their highest viewership this year. They've they've gradually been growing every year, pretty significantly. Honestly. As they should. So I, I, at this point, I'm not sure because they they've basically replaced E3 now, right? Yeah, just virtually. Um, I mean, yeah, virtually. No, but not even just virtually. You can go in person. No, the in person. So from I've been in person and yeah. we've been in person. Yeah, you were there yeah. too. We've been yeah. in person and it the size does not compare to E3. Mm, it doesn't. True, true. It doesn't. True. But E3 I had think, a lot of years to get to that point though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if we scale it then, if we're scaling to the start of E3, which I don't know the if people physical, were, The physical size scales to early E3. While it does? The virtual size, yeah. While the virtual yeah. size is, is is higher than uh, some of the waning E three numbers, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, you know my complaints with E three. They raised and jacked up the entry prices, so it was really just media only. You it, it cut out the whole fan pace, really, unless you were a super fan, and they just never adjusted. And then yeah, they they focused on press basically. Exactly. All of these companies were like, it's cheaper if we just do it. Because even the companies could smell. They were like, oh, our audience isn't here. Okay, we're just going to pack it up and do it ourselves online. Now we have 50 million PlayStation, Sony, Nintendo, Xbox Directs and showcases every summer. Yeah. And I have to keep up with it. That was the one thing I really loved about E3. Everything was there. Yeah, I loved it about E3. But at this point, I don't know what could possibly replace the summer games fest because even when Nothing. e3 was like in the last like last three four five even five years the summer games fest was there you know yep. it was slow it was growing it was slowly. growing yeah and, and every year you know jeff would take little pot shots at e3 right sure would. um and they sure basically would. absorbed it now i thought it was crazy 
<laughs> remember they, uh, I think it was Kotaku got the interview done where they were able to see how much you had to pay to get a trailer in the summer games. <gasps> yeah. Oh yeah. It was, but um, I mean, it was, it was hundreds a, of thousands of dollars for like a, a minute, a, two minutes. A one minute, a one minute trailer was two hundred fifty k. Two minutes yeah. was four hundred fifty k. I don't and think two people, and a half minute was five fifty k. I'm not really shocked. I'm not really I'm not shocked sh- at all. I, I think it's not so much that those numbers are wild because that's just basic advertising or marketing, mm-hmm. like it is. Like so many people are gonna see it. But I think it was just a reminder to creators like, oh, yeah, pay attention to the marketing budget, because if they're willing to spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a minute, one minute, then think about how much they have in their budget. It's just keep that in mind. It was just a keep that in mind. But that's where people were mainly talking about it. They were like, hey, if there's a brand that offered you X amount and then you see their trailer show up. Yep. You know, as a creator, as a creator, they offered you a certain amount, you know, two hour stream will give you a code and 200 bucks. <laughs> but then you see their trailer in the Summer Games Fest and it's a five minute trailer. And it's like, hold on, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you could tell the difference between like invited guests. The invited guests got like a lot of time. They got like yeah, five, ten and, minutes. And you could they tell the invited guests probably did not pay the same amounts as they the base not. prices here. Mm-mm. But um, it's it's a good it's a good way to sharpen your eye and yeah. to raise your but understanding your worth. People do not understand the power of advertising to a niche community. Like that's a no, boost. not at all. It's yeah. exponential in most cases. Like if this person talks about this to this person and that person, and it, and it just again, I will use this lens example to high hell. This lens that you are looking at, at us right now, this Lumix lens, I swear we were one of the first ones to use it years ago. And now (laughs) you can go to some of the biggest streamers. You can go to a whole bunch of streamers, a lot of streamers in our community. And what lens are they using? Ours. Because we had people coming back to back to back. Chelsea, what camera are you using? Chelsea, what camera are you using? What are you, what's your lens? What's your setup? What's your set? And now everybody's got it. I talk to people like, true. oh, yeah, the standard that that's influence. That's I've probably pushed hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars toward the Lumix just by but just by yapping. That's influencing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you're worth. Yeah. Well, no, you're worth. <laughs> no, you're worth. What's wrong? Why are you laughing? That's true. Yeah, you you right. No, you're worth. No, you're, no, worth. you're worth. OK. Yeah. Do you really want to talk? Mango wrote Young Thug in here in these notes <laughs> i just i just thought it was really funny to me that I, and look i don't even really follow it too much i don't even know why he is currently on trial right is I he know, still on trial it feels like it's been months uh yeah he's still on trial because the, wow. they selected a they replaced the judge right for i uh, probably had for to. this reason that we're talking about but yeah they replaced the judge they put in another judge and then that judge recused themselves from it and now they put in another judge <laughs> So, because I thought it was really funny or maybe interesting, his own lawyer was held in contempt of court because his lawyer basically came at the judge and was like, hey, you have been talking to the prosecution, right, to the other lawyers in private, right, on things about this case. I should be in there. And then the judge was like, who told you that? How'd you know that? And that was all the judge cared about. Who told you that? You wouldn't have known that unless you have a camera in my office or somebody's talking to you. So who told you that? And when he wouldn't tell him who told him that, he held him in contempt. And he was like, hey, if this appeal doesn't go through and I actually end up in jail for being held in contempt of court, I want to be in the cell next to Young Thug. (laughs) That is so funny to me, man. He, He probably just made himself a bunch of money Assuming he gets out of this, you know, with his license and everything. So, yeah, I mean, but yeah, are we surprised with how corrupt the justice system is? No, no. not at all. I mean, this world is corrupt. So what was he I, getting tried in for? Go, Possession? Uh, Young maybe, Thug was, why is he here? I don't know what he's being trialed for. Lyrics in his songs? Like what's going on here? Let's I don't see. know. Why why are know. we even here? 
Exactly. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking it up. Oh, here we go. He's facing charges for violating Georgia's Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act for his alleged involvement in criminal gang activity. He's also facing other charges regarding a possession of a firearm, possession of drugs with the intent to distribute, and participation in street gang activity. Oh, that's why they had him pull out his songs to basically say, you're a gang member. They're like, do you know what snitching is? I remember that. Prosecutors claim that the rapper is the lead of YSL, which is a street gang that has committed crimes. So basically, yeah, they're trying to put him under claiming that he's the lead of a uh, of a gang. Hmm. Well. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, we'll see. On to other stuff, y'all. So for July, besides us going from New York to L.A. to the Netherlands for TwitchCon EU and to New Orleans to celebrate family and then back home again, and we missed mm. Evo. <laughs> We apparently we had a commercial run at Evo. Uh, shout out to everybody who let us know. But yeah, I'm going uh, on right like right, right now, now actually. Yeah, yeah, right now, right now. Oh man, Evo. It's I feel like Tekken won. Just sidebar. This is just sidebar. Tekken won the uh, fighting game debacle. Like Street Fighter was great. I think Street Fighter really like was so loud, so wonderful. But Tekken, mm. the longevity of it, I think is gonna mm. really last. No, no. Street Why Fighter had the not? biggest tournaments this year. Street Fighter had not only the biggest tournaments, it had the biggest brand deals. It had the most people apply for Evo. Uh, if we're, we're talking like what fighting games won this year in order, it would be Street Fighter, then Tekken, then Mortal Kombat would be a distant third, unfortunately. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. I don't know. I feel like Tekken, you know, you can't. You You can't. You can't stack up Street Fighter up to Tekken when it comes to just the competition. I feel like there's just a level of skill that's just unmatched when it comes I to do, I do think Tekken is a harder game, straight up. I think it's a harder game. But, but if we're just talking which fighting game won this year, right? Like what the game? The year of fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I This was you. a year of fighting games, right? We it was. It just games. ended, technically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Technically, it just won because it was staggered because of Tekken's release. I know yeah. Street Fighter dropped last year, then it was Mortal Kombat, and then... So was Tekken early this year? No, they were all last year. But I, I consider No, like, Tekken was like the year, next year. When I say year of uh, Tekken... Hold up. No, Street Fighter came out July of last year. Tekken yeah. came out G- January of this year. This year, that's what I'm saying. Right, So yeah, I say yeah. a year to me... As a fighting game player, as somebody who's part of the FGC, who used to compete, are you, we're not on a cesarean calendar. No. All right? We're not going January to December. Yeah, you're not. You're going we July go to July e- at this point. We go Evo one year to Evo the next year. That's our year. So, so that's it. Okay. So we've hit year the year. Of fighting games. Yeah. So yeah. July to July. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, exactly. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. In the FGC calendar. This year of fighting games, I'll give it to Street Fighter. I'll I'll say it was such a pleasure still working with Capcom though. Like they they are creator forward. They are creator yeah, they forward. Are. I need they really are. I'm gonna need Tekken to get on it. I think Mortal Kombat does some things too. Maybe I'm just not as aware. Uh, not as much as Capcom. Yeah, but Capcom's on it. So yeah. from a creator stance, they absolutely won. It was so cool. Just witnessing all the people I love working with Capcom on Street Fighter. But besides all that, besides Evo, besides uh, what's happening, right? Well, next week is DreamCon, San Diego Comic-Con, all that. Besides all that, the biggest things that happened in the past week, the assassinate, the, the attempted assassination on Trump's life mm-hmm. and CrowdStrike. Mm-hmm. I will give you my one and only opinion uh this was the worst thing that could happen to us them trying to assassinate trump it was just too yeah. perfect they were too poised for yeah, this man's pictures, assassination yeah g- yeah giving him a it gave him him an undeniable boost as far <sighs> as his, his bid to get elected right because yes if you've seen the picture of him he's got blood on him 
He's surrounded by Secret Service. All the Secret Service look very nervous, you know, rightfully so. Uh, and he's got his fist up in the air with an American with flag in the flag. background. Like, the only thing that would have made it worse if there were, like, eagles flying in the background and, like, jets. <laughs> and the like, jets with the red, white, and blue smoke coming right, out the like, back. <laughs> right. Like, that's the only thing that would make it worse. So it, it is very oh. much, like, <laughs> the worst thing that could happen as far as, you know, helping Trump get reelected. Right. People are going to – people who just – I don't even know what kind of person would see that and just flip immediately. Or I could see somebody who's on the fence and they're coming from the red side flip back into it. But I could see people flipping to Trump's side because of that. And I'd, I can't yeah. understand that person. I can't fathom how, but I know it's going to happen. And yeah. Yeah, I saw all the posts and stuff, people saying like, oh, Trump took a bullet for America. Trump took a bullet for Right. Life. So yeah. it's, yeah, I am not happy about the situation at all. Um, so. And this, but, no, this, this kind of sealed it for me. Like, oh my God. How, how so you're, t so all I'm thinking right now, Mako, is Biden's, Biden's team that last week, they saw this man take a bullet because we all know it was really just glass, whatever, fine. But they saw mm. Trump ham up this 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 wound for America. And you just got Jill going, Joe, it's time. You're just so tired. I, I can't see this. This campaign is just tearing you apart. Like I could easily see Jill saying this. You can't mm. let it. It, it they they tried to take the 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 image of our son you can't you can't let it take you too Joe like I could see that yeah I could see Jill being like this campaign is tearing you apart you got to stop the team yeah. like the Democrats don't even really have your back like they should yeah there were there was already very public you know very public calls for Biden to resign. Um, and isn't that insane? Hold on. Hold, keep keep going, Mango. I'm going to look something yeah, up real like, quick. I mean, I, I could see doing it, you know, if, if you want, if you are in the party of the sitting president who's running for re-election, I could see talking to them privately and stuff. But the fact that you're making this public, all that does is hurt. Not only does it hurt Biden's chances, because now it's like, oh, man, his own party doesn't believe in him. But it also hurts the party overall because it's like, wow, the party can't even get behind one person. They're not united. Exactly. So I, exactly. I don't, you know, I don't see the benefit of being very public about that. So. Yeah. So I think I think Biden during the Vietnam War era, if I'm correct, I'm not sure. God, I hate searches. I don't have my computer yeah, up. That's so. why you don't search stuff during the podcast. I, but it's fine because I can. I'm gonna edit it. Mango, dang. So Biden received the blah 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 deferments. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Like his son, his son served in Iraq mm -hmm. in 2008, and I feel like there's so much. There's so much that Biden could have pulled from when it comes to serving this country. Like, yeah, Trump got a piece of glass in his ear, but like my own son put his life on the line for America. Like, like, and if the Democrats, like you said, if they had pushed behind one candidate, like a very, like in a strong, like just a full on strong formation, let's hit on every great quality that this candidate has brought this this is this is a man of an era he's been here he's put his life out for america he is someone who has served his whole life not just in one like his whole life has been laid mm -hmm. out for americans at one point he wanted to run for president but he was too young there, there's so much they could have pulled from for biden but because we have all this fickleness from the Democrats, I really feel like we just, we ain't got it together. We ain't got it together. Because Biden on paper, if you list out all his stuff, and if they just if they just helped my man on the podium a little bit, he could have made it. Mm. 
So, yeah, uh, I think when Joe saw that Trump took a billet for America and, you know, just looked at his past, look at the, he looked at the debate, he looked at his past, you know, talks, he was just like, yeah, man, I ain't got it in me. It's yeah. too much. His And he just got COVID, too, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he did say he came down with COVID. He said he's recovering, but, uh, yeah, he did say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. And then a couple of days ago, another thing that <laughs> another thing that got jumped was uh, Microsoft and CrowdStrike. So if you were a part of the many masses across the world whose computer just kept blue screening over and over and over again, don't worry, it wasn't just you. Thousands of flights were canceled. People mm. in Alaska had no 911 services, no emergency services. Yeah. Even Mango couldn't load his <laughs> his computer up uh, for work. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. It was it was a really, really bad outage. Probably one of the worst that I've ever seen in my lifetime anyway. And um, <laughs> yeah, there were people at my work complaining. And it wasn't something that could just be, I mean, there were, the fix was easy, quote unquote. It was simple. But first, figuring out the, what the fix was took a people took a while, time. right? Even even just taking, you know, people like, you know, five hours or four hours, or right? because it really it had started last night. It started like the night before at like ten p.m. Thursday. So the fact that it took people like twelve hours to really start disseminating what the fix was, that is a long time in internet time for such a huge outage. So yeah, and and everything uses CrowdStrike. So literally, yeah, flights, healthcare services, uh, the stock market uh, related uh, uh, bots and things like that that were on systems protected by CrowdStrike. Like it, it was just ridiculous. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Why are we centralizing this? We don't need central data security. We don't. Mm. We do not need a point of failure that destroys everything in its path when it goes down and personally you know my opinion if you were on my stream when this happened you know my opinion sure CrowdStrike may have had a failure in its update when they pushed that code there was a failure that is a problem you should yeah. not mess your code up you should never push bad code but at the same time Microsoft did such a good job throwing the heat on CrowdStrike when the real problem, the real problem is why is CrowdStrike so ingrained in your boot, in your boot process? I mean, That's to me, the it should be issue. like an auto, like it should have been an auto, like, look, if Microsoft controls when the updates happen, right? Yeah. So if there is an update, then and then now I get a blue screen. Do it like you do with recovery mode, right? If people don't know. Uh, if your computer improperly shuts off, it's generally three times, then Microsoft will be like, oh, do you want to enter recovery mode because it didn't close Period. right the last three times? Okay, so do the same thing. If my computer gets a blue screen three times in a row after and an they update, log that. then start pop. You don't do it automatically because I know I'd be annoyed if I meant for it to blue screen and it did it automatically. Yeah. But just on every boot, pop up and say, hey, do you want to do a system restore? Or Period. before and before every update, make a restore point because that was yes. the issue. A lot, a lot of people were trying to system restore and they didn't have a recent restore point yes. because for some reason you Microsoft have to manually doesn't make a point. Yeah, you have to after, manually do it right or before each update. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't know. Microsoft Microsoft does make points, but they're very sparse. Very. Yeah. yeah. I I told you, and I tell everybody this. It's not always the best at the top of you know the spaghetti code it, you, not everybody there was a time when our os was i feel it was like tight like at least at least when it was made it was made with intention and there weren't so many mistakes now this whole subscription service thing and these constant the constant updates i mean i think they have to though because of the there's just so much they have to manage now versus you know back when we just started with personal computers but yeah. there's so many cooks in the kitchen there's so many people who just aren't good at their jobs all it takes is one tiny mistake even though yeah. these mistakes these mistakes are very avoidable 
very avoidable. Like it's yeah, it's all yeah. about just reading. Ugh. Yeah. yeah mist- mistakes happen, so I don't, you know, want to put the full blame. But there is something to say that an issue as frankly dumb, simple right? as a as a null pointer uh, uh, reference, effectively, um, can get past multiple levels of CI and multiple levels of QA all the way down to actually appearing on millions of systems around the world. Um, yeah, I don't, I I just, I felt like this was, this was, this was going to happen. I've been waiting for this to happen. People don't, people don't take their job seriously. Like when you understand the scope of what you do, then you need to increase the seriousness you take your job at every level. Right. At every single level. Ugh. Gosh. Yeah, y'all. That was, that was, that's what we've been up to. Uh, you know, wish me luck on these job interviews that I've been doing. I've been interviewing for these uh, past few months. Just trying to make sure I got another job lined up once we're done with our guilds. Ugh. Baby. Yeah, you, you've been getting busy. You've I've been, been getting, getting busy really busy. Work. Yeah. Yeah, you've been traveling. We'll see what happens. If y'all see something pop up and it's like, well, I'm starting this new job, it was it was the result of one of these interviews. So. It was. I'm excited. Uh, if you want to know what we're watching right now, if you need something to just, if you need to chill out, let's talk about House of the Dragon. Let's talk about The Boys. I know The Boys just ended. Bruh. We could go all day. We're finally catching up with The Bear. Season two, my honest opinion on The Bear, I feel like, Every season is immaculate, but the finale, they take their characters and they throw them into a blender. They just toss them up for no reason. I'm like, why would they do that? Why would they say that? But I still love it. I'll, st- I'll still eat it up. Are there any shows for I'm missing? Bear. Yeah, the bear. We talked about yeah. it last night. Yeah, with yeah, the bear. Was, yeah. yeah. No, we, that's mainly what we watch. I mean, House of the Dragon, the bear. Um, just finished The Boys. Just, just finished, finished the, boys. the boys. Uh as far as anime, Demon Slayer, Slime. We we finished Demon Slayer. We're catching up with Slime. We want to start Delicious and Dungeon back up. Um we're, I'm waiting on Overlord to come out. I've been waiting on Overlord to come out for <sighs> a long never time. Coming out. We need to Take finish Freerun, I guess. Everybody keeps talking about people are still talking about Freerun. Yeah. We do need still. to pick Freerun back up. Yeah. I don't want to be sad. I don't know. I just feel like I'm gonna be depressed watching Free Run. Like I'm gonna cry or something. I don't know. I Tony's mean, birthday was this week. Uh, <laughs> our boy turned seven, and I've been trying to convince Mango to adopt another cat. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the cat's picture right here. Yeah. Yeah, he turned seven years old. Shrody he swam uh, a little bit. He did. We're, we're gonna we'll put the um put a little clip whenever right we get the too. vlog out. I mean, we're going to do like a It'll monthly vlog, vlog from now on. So at the, we only got like a week and a half left in July. Well, it's not like a whole month. Like it's not the month of July. Like it's just three weeks. So how I've been, if you guys want tips, um, I've been trying my hand out at vlogging. And what you do is you set yourself, set a goal. Like every or every other day, film for like five minutes. Film your life. I actually just filmed some of this podcast. And what you do is when you film, you put it on your editor like that day. Just throw it on the timeline and edit a little bit. And then you'll have a full video like real like real quick. After three weeks, you have a month like you have a month vlog. So I have a vlog that I'm hoping to put out. I hope it shows like an accurate temperature check of our life. I'm, I've been inspired by some vloggers that I watch now, so I want to try it out. We'll see. But yeah, if you want to see our boy Tony's birthday, it'll be in our monthly vlog for next yeah, month. Yeah, we got we got we got to get a little some you know a little something else in the vlog too. But we'll we'll yeah, probably we gotta, record sometime next week or this. I guess at the end of this week. Are you talking about recording the end of this week? At the end of this week, I mean it's Sunday. We got yeah, something this. I'm recording probably. a lot. I'm recording every other day. She's trying to put our whole life out there. That's what it is. I knew Mango wasn't going to like it. I knew it. I knew it. That's the point. That's the point, Mango. You got to give them like a piece of you. 
I'm not feeling like in our bedroom. I ain't got enough for me to go around. You do. You do. And see, this is what they see. All them times, y'all, we be Mango and I be cackling up in this house. We be laughing to each other. We be joking. We be like, man, if people knew how we really were, man, we'd be so funny. They they think we're the funniest people. We got to record it, Mango. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to try it. We're going to see what we're going to record. It should be a good, It'll be I great. think, an overall good experience. I know. Vlog wise, so we're gonna try to take y'all with us and show y'all what we do every other day. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm gonna try to catch Mango doing stuff. I got y'all. I'm gonna be snitch number one. Y'all know I'm good at it. I'm gonna be snitch number one. <laughs> y'all, thank you for joining us for episode four of the download. I really hope I got that episode number right. Don't worry, correct me. Is it four? I'm pretty sure it's four, but I just okay. like to second guess myself all the time. You can join us on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And on TikTok, as well as here on, did I say YouTube already? I hope I did. Join us everywhere. Join us on Twitch as well. If you want to catch things I'm up to right now, check out State of Slay, but also check out our game with our besties, Dice Cream Sandwich. We're playing War of the Realms. You can catch them every Sunday. I believe it starts at noon central our time, but just go and follow Dice Cream on Instagram. You'll get all the updates We'll be streaming every Sunday. You can catch our new game live if you need to catch the last episode. We're only two episodes as of recording this. So go catch it. Thank y'all so much for hanging. Be good, make good choices. And I'll see you on the next download. Bye. Bye.